This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. When God puts it in your heart and you go after it with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind, it will bring you joy. We cannot do the scripture that is in the bulletin on the uh, screen, so we need to turn to Matthew 15. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. And we will begin reading in verse 21. I believe that's right. Yeah, Matthew 15, verse 21. I had a guy tell me years ago when I asked him about, we just were talking about this and that and I, I said what would you what would you like to, uh, the preacher to preach on Sunday and he said you need to preach about the Bible and you need to preach about Jesus and so that was good advice so we're going to look at one of Jesus experiences straight from the Bible people wonder about Jesus sometimes we're going to read in a minute but people wonder about Jesus and say what is it what about Jesus who you know when you talk about Jesus who are you talking about that's a very good question. There are people that won't ask that question in church or any other time because they think people treat them like a second-class citizen. If they got questions about Jesus, I'll tell you the way I feel. you got questions about anything, you need to go ahead and ask the questions. I suppose there are, someone said there are no stupid questions. Uh, there's a joke associated with that. You probably shouldn't call people stupid. In fact, not probably about it. You shouldn't call people stupid. You shouldn't call people names of any kind. Uh, I said you shouldn't call people names of any kind. Uh, especially if you don't want to be called that name. That's a good rule of thumb. If you don't want to be called it, you probably shouldn't call somebody else that. So you got questions you need to ask. Uh, and if someone's got an answer, they may give you an answer. If they're a person of integrity, they may say, well, we're going to find the answer instead of making stuff up. I remember a preacher one time was asked what these letters mean up here. This IHS, you may never pay attention to that, that IHS. And one of the little kids there doing children's mess, one of the little students uh, asked what that meant. And the preacher said, it means in his service. And the kid said, is that true? He said, I don't know, I just made it up. <laughs> We're we going to have to find out what it means. You know what those three letters are? You might know. I think we shared this once before. You know what that IHS is? Those are the first three letters of Jesus' name mm. in Greek. IHS, Jesus. So asking questions, nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with asking questions about Jesus uh, and who, who is Jesus. Let me give you a real simple answer to a real complicated question. First is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's from Hebrews chapter 13. Jesus, the eternal, and eternity is another. I had a guy tell me one time, if I could understand eternity, I'd be a happy clam. I don't know if I believe that or not. Eternity, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a head trip. But Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Which means that before you and I were and before anything was, still there was Jesus. Okay, that makes sense. Before anything, there was Jesus. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So, from, uh, from the beginning to the middle to the end, Jesus Christ the same. And yet, Jesus Christ tempted in every way like as we are. Anybody ever get tempted? Sure you do. Everybody gets tempted. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you don't want to do it, it's probably not a good temptation. That's an ironic statement, a good temptation. If, you're not, if you don't want to do it, it's not a temptation. But it says in the Word that Jesus was tempted every way, tested and tempted in every way that we are, yet without sin, which is an amazing thing to say. So Jesus, a flesh and blood person, just like us having to experience life, 
in the same way that we experience life. And so having said that uh, about Jesus, let's look at these verses in uh, Matthew 15. We'll take a few stops along the way. We're going somewhere. Uh, we won't go on forever. But I do want to show you a couple things about an experience Jesus had. Jesus left that place and went away to a district called Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. A Canaanite woman. Who is this woman? Canaanite is one of those words, if you've been in church or you've been around the Bible, whatever, you just kind of gloss over and said, Oh, that's them. That's them. Uh, the Canaanites. That's them. You ever heard about them? Uh, them. That's them over there. Them over there. Well, you know them. You know, people come and something said, they said it. Well, who is they? Well, you know them. You know, or those are the people we don't have anything to do with this. Who? Them. You know, we don't have anything to do with them. Those kind of people. Them. Always out there. Who? Those are the people we don't want to have anything to do with. They're them. Out there. Them. Let me make this easy for you. Canaanite is probably Lebanese. Mm -hmm. Lebanese, Lebanon, Syria. Anybody Syria in the news? The civil war, the terrible civil war in Syria? They're neighbors. Lebanon and Syria are neighbors. I'll tell you two things I know about Lebanon. Number one, up until a few years ago, it was called the Switzerland of the Middle East because it was such a lovely place to live. They had some more too. Switzerland of the Middle East. The other thing I can tell you is that my Islamic studies professor, when I went to seminary in Memphis, went to an Episcopal school in Lebanon. Lebanon, mostly Muslim, but went to a Christian, an Episcopal school in Lebanon. You got that? Mostly Muslim, but went up until college to a Christian school in Lebanon. Let me stop and say, if you got a chance to go where you've never been before, or to meet people you've never met before, for heaven's sake, go. If you got a chance to go, go. You know why Mr. Mark Twain said, if you will go see the world, it will change your world. If you go see the world, it will change your world. If you go see people in other areas, People that are different, that look different, you will start to understand, number one, there's something to be celebrated about our diversity. Number two, uh, down deep, we're all basically the same. So if you got a chance to go somewhere, I don't even care if it's going to Arkansas. We're talking today, and, and I just said, I don't know anything about Arkansas. I mean, I've been through twice. I've never seen anything in Arkansas. So next time I have a chance to go to Arkansas, uh, I may go just to, see, just to see what it's all about. But just go. Miss Marlene Price, who just died. Anybody know Miss, Miss Price, the Price, Wood, uh, Price Cabinets in Myrtle? Anybody know Miss Mar Marlene? She just died this last week. Someone said she was an incredibly strong woman before Alzheimer's started taking her mind away. Uh, she wanted to go to California. No one wanted to go with her. So you know what she did? She got in the car and she went. And her, I don't know how old she was. She just got in the car and went to go see California. Why? Because she wanted to see it. Not everybody will do that. You got a chance to go see something, meet somebody new, even if it's in the school cafeteria. See, that's where it's at. Barbershop, beauty shop, school cafeteria, that's where it's all at. You got a chance to go meet somebody new, go and meet somebody new, even if you're the one that has to go out and, 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 and take the opportunity. And don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. We have opportunities every single week. Everyone in this room has opportunities every, every single week to do something you've never done before. And the chances are that we're going to say what? No, I'm not going to get outside of my comfort zone. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to budge. I'm not going to go say hey to that person because I don't know that person. Well, if you go say hey, guess what? Then you'll know them. See, this is the thing. You've got to move outside. This woman, this woman, this Canaanite woman, this probably Lebanese woman, she does what? She comes to Jesus and starts shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Someone says demon. What do you mean demon? Anybody, who's heard the word demon here before? You've heard it. What does it mean? Is it something on Charmed? I watched Charmed the other day. That's in reruns. Maybe I shouldn't watch it. I watched that thing the other day. I said, what's a demon? Demon is something that makes you do what you probably shouldn't do. I said, do you mean that in this day and age you believe in people being possessed? Absolutely. You ever seen someone get mad? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Road rage is real, man. Walmart rage is real, man. <laughs> Cereal aisle rage is real. Get out of my way so I can get my crackling old brand and get it now. What are you doing in my way? It's real. You get mad. Blind rage. You can't even see because you're what? Because you're angry. I was in traffic and I thought of this thing when I was about to cuss a blue streak. I didn't, praise God, but I wanted to. And all of a sudden I thought of that phrase, blind rage. And you know what I realized, Neil? I couldn't see anything except what I was angry about in that moment. It's real. It's real. I remember being in a church meeting one time and because of what we were talking about, I thought someone was going to get lynched and I thought that was going to be me. It wasn't here. It doesn't matter where it was. Just angry. 
just anger, it'll get all over you. It'll get all over you in a minute. You don't even know anything except that you're angry. It'll just, it'll wash all over you. There's hate and there's anger that wants to swallow you up in this world right now. I'm telling you right now, it wants to come and eat your lunch. And you'll catch it in the same way that you'll catch an infection. And the only antibiotic you've got for that sort of thing is what we were just singing about. The Holy Spirit washing all over me. This is why preachers all the time talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because if the Holy Spirit doesn't come and fill you, there's some other spirit out there that's going to be just as happy to fill you up. Forget all this stuff about the horns and the pitchfork and whatever else. Forget all about that. I'm talking about something that wants to come inside you. There is someone that wants to come inside you and change you from the inside out. And that someone is the Holy Spirit. Bless the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants to come inside and change you. So here's this woman that's saying, what? My daughter is possessed. She needs help. Possessed. Possessed. You're just angry. I'm going to stick on this for a minute. I don't know why I'm going to stick on it. You're just angry. You don't even know why you're angry anymore, Miss Betty. She's not angry today, but you're just angry and you don't know why you're angry. What, what you going to do with the anger that you feel on the inside? What you going to do? You know what you need to do? You need to look it dead in the face and you need to say, hello, anger. Now you need to just go on straight on past me. That's what you need to do. You need to go and say, hello, anger. Now it's time to say goodbye. Don't pretend like it's not there because it's there. And the sooner you and I learn how to deal with that stuff, it's going to go straight on past us. Help me, Jesus. She said, what? Help me, Jesus. Anybody say, help me, Jesus, this week? I did. I said it all, I said it all week. Help me, Jesus. In fact, that's the way I pray most times. Jesus. Not all the time. There, You can pray a million different ways. Yes, you can pray a million different ways. Someone say, you trying to be holy? By... No, it just comes out of my mouth. It's like, Jesus, God have mercy. Jesus, come on. She's saying, Jesus, I need help. Keep on reading. 23, he did not answer her at all, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, What? It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the, to the dogs. So this woman comes for help, and what does she get? What does she get when she comes for help? I'm going to tell me. She gets more than nothing. What does she get? What does she get? She gets rejected, full in the face. She comes to get help. They say, send her away. She's making noise. She comes for help. You're not a Jew. Go away. Jesus saying you're not a Jew. She comes for help. And Jesus calls her what? Calls her a dog. Now, I know you love your dog. I love my dog too. But when he says dog, that's not a good thing. You know what that is? It's a racial term. Don't eat like us, don't wash like us, don't dress like us, don't worship like us. They're what? They're dogs. And here's Jesus. Is Jesus a racist? No. There are two ways that people deal with this verse right here. And I picked it for a very important reason. There are two ways that people deal with it. The first is they say Jesus is just playing with her because Jesus loves the little children. Yeah. All the little children of the world. He's just playing with her, trying to draw her faith out. And you'll come across that. The more likely reason is that what? Jesus is having to learn. Jesus, a flesh and blood man, is having to learn. Jesus, just like you and just like me, Jesus having to learn what? To walk in the light. There is no sin until we see the light and what? Refuse to walk in the light. If we're walking in darkness, we can't see anything at all. But once you see the light... And Jesus here needs to see the light. What? For just a moment. Because He's a human growing up and learning what it is that the will of God is. He needs to learn what? That God didn't just come for the Jews, but He came for what? He came for the non-Jews. He didn't come just for our people, but He came for other people as well. This is Jesus, tempted every way, Neil, like as we are, yet without sin. When we see the light, then we have to do what? When you see the light, then you have to turn. Excuse me, I'm dry. And I knew I would be. Jesus having to learn. I want you to get this. I want you to see it. Jesus, the eternal Son of God, yet a flesh and blood man, having to learn what? To open up. To open up His heart for people that maybe He hasn't opened it up His heart before. There's nothing wrong with that. If you see that you're doing... If you just learn all of a sudden, if the light just comes, and then you what? You need to walk in the light. You need to walk in the light. Jesus, our example. So if Jesus needed to learn, guess what? Every once in a while, I need to learn. I need to learn. So this woman, what? Who refuses to take no for an answer. Rejected. Rejected, rejected. And refuses to take no for an answer. What happens? 
Verse 28, Jesus answered her and said, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. And it's probable that Jesus used this experience to tell the parable that's in Luke 18 where he said a woman came to a judge to receive justice, a judge who did not fear God, and she refused to take no for an answer. And great, this woman who is called a great believer, a great believer. What's the point? Well, the point number one, of course, is about faith. But the bigger point is that we need to learn what? To move towards each other. Not away. In this time, in Jesus' time, we need to learn to move towards each other. If what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia, boom. And if you don't know what happened, I ain't going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. Go and Google. Go and Google what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia this last week. If it teaches us anything at all, it should teach us that we need to draw toward each other and not push each other away. Mother, mother, there are far too many of you crying. Brother, 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 there are far too many of you dying. We need to find a way to bring some loving in here today. Marvin Gaye, what's happened years ago, and it still works today. We need to learn to what? To move toward each other. To embrace each other. If you want to know what it means to be a Christian, if you want to know what it means to be a lover of Jesus and a follower of Jesus, it means we leave all our prejudices, we leave all our bigotries, we leave all our hatreds at the door and we say, Jesus, you show me what I need to do with the people that you've given me in my life today. Amen. Huh? Got to give you the name of Will Campbell, that old preacher who died a few years ago. Will Campbell, who walked with the students in Arkansas when they were integrating the schools. Will Campbell, who got kicked out of Ole Miss because he preached equality of all races. Will Campbell, who got in trouble with his own friends because he went to see James Earl Ray after he shot Martin Luther King, King, went to go see James Earl Ray in jail. Will Campbell told it this way. He said an older white woman went to a cemetery to pay respects to her son who had died. And she looked off in the distance and she saw a young black man who was dressed a little bit differently and she wondered what that was and what it was all about. And he made his way to her and she didn't know what to expect. And when he got to her, he said, your son was my best friend. And I brought this flower to put it in his grave. And they cried and they wept and they put the flowers at the grave. And then Will Campbell said this, how shall we overcome? Just like that. Don't go away from here saying the preacher said Jesus was less than perfect. I didn't say that. All I told you that was Jesus had to learn. Same way you and I have to learn. Don't go away here saying anything other than what this text says to each and every one of us. We got all kinds of groups. We got all kinds of cliques. We got all kinds of feelings. And the only thing that makes a difference in this world is when we take the risk of what? Of getting to know somebody else. Skin color, religion, money in the bank, clothes on your back. It's all to one side. Let no debt remain among you except the debt to love one another. Any law that there is is summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. So did Jesus. So should we. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Lots of different people in the world, dear God. And yeah, lots of hatred in the world too. Hatred that sometimes wants to swallow us up. As people who bear the name of the one who was crucified for the sins of the entire world. Help us to be people who walk in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the hatred of the world, but the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you for Jesus. Bless you for His power as Savior. Bless you for His blessed example that shows us that it's okay to learn a new way. And bless all of us trying to make our way in this crazy world. May we find some goodness and truth and beauty around us and maybe even coming out of us every once in a while. Bless the folks in Virginia that are grieving. Bless all of us and help us to find a new way. Amen.
side zeros and light not expected But not quite perfected again Look up, see the sun is shining There's hope on a new horizon